seen it in our comments when we've covered this story before. People would say, I just can't believe it. I can't believe that there's an intentional invasion of the United States. I just, I find it so hard to believe. What do you say to those people? You're watching it happen in Panama. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'll shatter that right now. You don't have to listen to me. Don't listen to me at all. I'm going to point you to a U.N. document. You could read their papers. And if you don't believe that, then I don't know what to tell you. You could go look up. Everybody watching this can go look up the paper uh, Migration in the 2030 Agenda. That's written by the IOM, the International Organization of Migration, which is the migration arm of the United Nations. And it says in there it calls these, quote unquote, migrants, which we can get to that in a second. That word. That's, that's a, there's a misuse of that word going on, but we can get to that in a second. But it calls these migrants agents of development. And it says that the goal of migration in the 2030 agenda in this blueprint, it says that the goal is to facilitate, not to stop migration. So, I mean, it says it right there, and you can read the whole document. I mean, it gets even worse. Um, you can read the replacement migration, re- replacement migration document that was put out in, I believe, the year 2000, also by the UN, where it talks about different case scenarios for uh, different countries, including the United States. And I believe for the United States, there's five case scenarios that it lays out. And one of them, there's almost a billion people that they show migrating into the U.S. It's absolutely insane. You guys can read these documents from the U.N. if you don't believe myself or Clayton. Yeah, no, great point. Great point. So it's not hyperbole. You're watching these individuals. You're speaking to them. You're seeing these documents. Yeah, so the document that I exposed in particular, so first of all, I mean, they're getting a lot of different documents. Um, But the one that we're talking about in this particular show right now is a document that I was sent by a Chinese illegal alien. And what it is, is it's a document that I believe to have been written by another Chinese illegal alien. If you read the document, it's on muckraker.com. You guys can go check it out. Um, It was originally written in Chinese. I had it translated to English. And then the intro it mentions a woman named Ivy. It has her WeChat, uh, yeah, her WeChat contacts listed on the top, which I have redacted and took out just for safety purposes. Um, but she wrote this whole document. It explains how to get from South America all the way to the U.S. border, you know, uh, how much to pay smugglers and various other things. Very, very detailed. And then I would say probably 75, 75% of the document, maybe about 150 pages, talks about how to exploit the U.S. asylum system and U.S. asylum law. And so this document was sent to me by a Chinese illegal alien who I met in the Darien Gap, who's now living here in Los Angeles. And he told me that it circulated among uh, Chinese in various WeChat groups that they used to communicate when they're on the way up to the U.S. Uh, And can you describe the type of people that are being handed these documents? We've heard reporting that they are military age men, mostly, who are coming coming through the Darien Gap on their way to the United States southern border. Um, can you describe you, you can you describe the individuals who'd be handed these documents in order to illegally navigate the system? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, with the Chinese in particular, yeah, so down in the Darien Gap, um, like you just said, a lot of these people are military-aged men. So, you, I mean, the audience can infer what that's all about. I mean, just some anecdotal evidence would be there's reports down there of – some of these men, after they've crossed through the gap and they get to one of the first camps, uh, there's a hotel, you call it a hotel, it's like a, a one-star, five-star hotel for the Darien Gap. Um, and in one of these hotels, it's right next to one of these migrant refugee centers. Uh, there are reports of them going to this hotel, buying a chicken, slicing open its throat, and drinking the chicken blood, which is a ritual of the People's Liberation Army. That's been documented down there. So, I mean, that's some anecdotal evidence that these people coming over here are definitely Chinese special forces or, or People's Liberation Army or, you know, whatever branch of the armed forces. Well, I'll get you out of here on this. If you could explain to our audience the Darien Gap, we've covered it extensively here on the show, but I'd love to hear your take on it. And it seems like a number of international organizations have set up what you want to call them camps. You want to call them sort of waypoints. You want to call them, I don't know, hospitals, service centers right there in the Darien Gap with buses and nonstop bus routes right to the United States border and handing them medical kits and and handing girls, young girls, uh, pregnancy kits and all sorts of things. Um, when you're there, who are you seeing? Where, where, are these, uh, where are these people coming from, and how exactly are they getting to the United States? Yeah, I mean, so in short, what the deal is down there is you have the entire world, over 100 different countries flying to South America. Uh, they're flying to Quito, Ecuador, because over there it's very easy entry requirements. Anybody can get into Quito, Ecuador. Then they illegally cross into Colombia. And by the way, this is all written in that translated Chinese document if you want to read it to your audience. So this is part of the blueprint. This is is detailed in the blueprint. Yeah. This is detailed in the blueprint. 
And all these people know, all these people somehow know from a hundred different countries know exactly what to do. So, you know, I mean, there's a Chinese blueprint. I'm sure there's blueprints written in every language that people have put together and sent through these, uh, these groups. I mean, you can find these smuggling groups on, on Facebook and whatnot. It's very easy to find, but we're not going to get into that. So anyway, what happens is the whole world is flying into Quito, Ecuador. Then they cross illegally into Colombia. And then they trek through the Darien Gap, which connects North and South America, a very thin strip of land. And that's lawless jungle. And I'm here, so we'll, we'll shatter a myth right now, the idea that this is some sort of humanitarian operation. Before these people go through the jungle, they're handed by the IOM, the International Organization of Migration, the Migration Hour of the UN, like we mentioned. They're handed what I would call a rape kit. I'm not sure what they call them, but these kits have uh, you know, male and female condoms, day after pills, and I believe whistles. And they're given these kits, and they're, said, they're told, hey, you know, if you're raped in the jungle, at least you got this kit. They're pawns is what they're using them as pawns. They just want to send them over here in numbers. If some of them get taken out or raped in the process, they don't care. Um, so there you go. We just shattered the myth that this is about humanitarianism. But then they cross into Panama. And then once they get into Panama and they make it through the jungle, um, they're greeted by the UN and associated international agencies such as the Red Cross, the Norwegian Refugee Council, Doctors Without Borders, and a number of others. And they're, they're actually given, for example, maps. I have right in front of me a, a map from the Red Cross that details the whole route to get from Panama to the U.S. border. I mean, mm-hmm. multiple different routes and multiple different entry points. And it has about 200 different stops that are friendly to illegal immigrants where you can stop and charge your phone and get food. Um, and then they're also given, you know, various aid packages and sent on their merry way to the United States. And that's what's going on. And it's a whole staging point, basically, where they can recuperate, get instructions and materials to then ultimately make their way all the way up to the U.S. border. <laughs> Unbelievable. Remarkable story, Anthony. 